Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our organ dedication concert. My name is Stephanie Van Royen, and I'm the worship director here at First Christian Reformed Church of Barrie. And on behalf of our congregation, our council, our staff, and our worship ministry team, I extend a warm welcome to everyone joining us here in the room tonight and those joining us on live stream as well. Tonight's concert is the result of a long history of organ music in worship at our church. And you'll hear more about it from Sandy Strickrida later in the program. You'll also hear from Gary Schmidt, who installed the Viscount Sonus 70 DLX with his unique sound system to create an authentic pipe organ sound for worship. And of course, we also want to welcome our guest organist, Andre Gnevel from St. Catharines, and his associate, Gus Junker, who will be assisting him. And we will enjoy their music a little later in the program. I would like to sincerely thank our congregation, staff, and council for all their support toward the purchase and installation of this new organ. It is an absolute joy to use in worship. I would also like to thank the many talented musicians in our congregation who share their gifts tonight and regularly in worship. Most importantly, we give thanks and praise to our mighty God, who faithfully provides all we need and rules over all creation. To God be all the glory. May the words of Psalm 150 be our theme during tonight's celebration of music. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I now invite Pastor Dick Bowling to come and open our evening with prayer. Stephanie. I'm Pastor Nick. I also want to welcome you here. Thanks for coming out on this beautiful evening. And let's offer our night to God. Please pray with me. Glorious God, tonight we celebrate this new instrument in the sanctuary, a new way for us to lift our music to you. We fully expect that filling this space with sound will be joyous for us, and it's our desire that you will be pleased as we're pleased to hear it. Thank you for the journey that this church took to get here. It wasn't simple or easy. We had conflicting opinions at a church, but here we are. And we ask you to bless this new instrument, that it would bring you glory and honor and praise. Lord, I thank you for the team that came here to custom build this organ here for us. They worked hard and they built something beautiful. Thank you for the hands that built the instrument. And then as we move together tonight into music, Lord, fill us not only this space with sound, fill us, fill our hearts with rejoicing, with joy and emotion. Music speaks a language all its own. Bless the fingers and the feet of those who play tonight. Amen. And I'm going to invite Gary up. Gary, are, are you going to share with us a little bit about the organ? Gary Schmidt, come on up. I appreciated getting to know Gary and Stacy, you as well. They taught me some about organ construction when they were here. Welcome, Gary. Good evening, friends in Christ. It would be reminiscent of my part not to first say thank you 
to Stephanie, the music team, the pastors, the membership that had the vision and the eyesight to see how this organ can work as a blessing both in traditional and contemporary music and praise and glorify the Lord. I'll also especially thank my associates whom we couldn't do this job alone, but they are a great team and I'm thankful for each and every one of them. Now to explain a little bit about this organ, today in the market, you can buy a straight pipe organ, you can buy a hybrid pipe organ, you can buy a digital sampled organ, or you can buy a modeling technology. This organ is not like most electronic instruments today. It is a modeled instrument. A digital sampled instrument takes a sound recording and plays it back to you. So they record organ pipes and they play them back. In this case, this organ creates each pipe of every note, of every stop, of every orchestral voice, and it, it creates them within itself in the computer and plays that sound back. The technician can actually adjust each stop, each level, each note for the building. And in this case, where we've combined some pipe work from the previous organ, it's seamless. And that's the whole idea, is to create the sound that is pipe organ. But then this organ goes one step further. It has 300 organ pipe stops in its computer. It has 30 orchestral stops, which can be used for both traditional and contemporary music. Our company goes one step further in its designs. Our systems are multi-channeled. You can take a small organ in your home and you can have a couple of loudspeakers. Organ pipes are different. There is a whole pile of them. And you can't push all that sound into one little speaker and get the sound to sound correctly. But our systems are designed to do that, both with speakers and with pipes, whether they're acoustic or windblown. The idea is to enhance the tone, and when we do so, we come and we study the acoustics as if we were building a pipe organ. And I can say for a fraction of the cost. And that experience as pipe organ builders and our love and passion for the instrument of years of experience, we understand how to voice and tonally regulate a pipe organ to sound properly in its new environment. And we were able to retain parts of the old instrument as a historical aspect for this church. And may it continue to glorify the Almighty God. Thank you. We're now invited to sing and worship together. As we join our voices, please rise in body or spirit to sing How Great Thou Art.
Good evening. My name is Sandra Strickwerda. My family and I arrived in Barrie in July 1977 and have been members of this congregation ever since. In the fall of that year, I was persuaded with much urging that a choir should participate in the Christmas service. Directing a choir turned out to be a very enjoyable thing, so I did it for about 20 years. After that, I sang in our church choir and worship teams for a long time. Now I was asked to present a history of the organ in our congregation. You may be interested to know that in the early 1950s, when this congregation was just starting, they met in a funeral home where there was only a piano to accompany the singing. They also met in other buildings and sanctuaries in Barrie where there was a piano and sometimes an organ. Finally, in the early 1950s, the congregation built their own church building. Someone heard about a pump organ being available to use, so that organ was brought into the new sanctuary. However, that organ only lasted a few weeks as the congregation didn't feel it was adequate for their worship services. Before the church was dedicated on November 17, 1954, a used Hammond electric organ was purchased for the big price for that day of $100. I find it amazing that along with starting up their new livelihoods, building their own church building, and starting Timothy Christian School in a new country, the immigrants thought the music in this service was so important that they found the money to purchase an organ. When the young congregation moved into its church building on St. Vincent Street, the organ was hidden in a small room behind the front wall of the sanctuary. The organist had a peephole to see what was going on in church. Well, that didn't last too long, and the organ was brought right into the sanctuary against the front wall. In 1968, the pastor, Reverend John Van Dyke, told the council that he knew of an organ store in Sarnia where a bigger organ with more volume and more variation could be purchased. Reverend John Van Dyke, Mr. Bert Scully, and another church member drove to Sarnia to look at this electronic Wurlitzer organ, which they purchased right then and there on behalf of the congregation. This organ was used until we moved into this current sanctuary on Christmas Day, 1986. For this new church building, the council appointed a committee to find an organ for this bigger sanctuary, hopefully a pipe organ. We had a budget of $50,000. Mr. Bert Scully, Mr. John Tremstra, Mr. Hank Decker and myself looked at many electronic organs all over Southern Ontario. But then we were excited to find a rebuilt pipe organ which could be purchased within our budget. In early 2000, one of our organists, Sieb Smilda, hand wired and soldered an electronic action system to this organ, which increased the number of sound combinations from three to 160. This organ grew some more in 2007 when Sieb suggested that we could get some more pipe organs from a distributor in the Netherlands. Sieb and a friend of his spent many hours refurbishing the 95 pipes and then installing them to add to the sound and variations of this organ. Whether it was for preludes, offertories, congregational singings, or postludes, our church organists enjoyed the variations of this organ. Of course, when talking about church organs, one must also mention the organists, as they are the ones whose music enhances our worship and make the accompaniment to congregational singing excellent or poor, regardless of the organ. We have been blessed throughout the history of this church with many good organists. They are all named on page 78 of our church's 50th anniversary book, which is in our church library. In the early services, there was a psalm sung in the middle of a reading sermon. 
But one Sunday, the elder stopped reading, announced the psalm, and there was dead silence in the church. After verbal prompting and urging and calling out a name several times, the organist woke up (laughs) and then, rather half awake, tried to accompany the psalm as the congregation sang it, and as it says in the anniversary booklet, it was a struggle. Then later on in the late 1960s and into the 1970s, one of the organists in this church was a very unique person who sometimes surprised the congregation with his choice of music. I remember when he played Ave Maria for an offertory. I was also surprised one Sunday morning when our family walked into church and heard the organist playing a national British song, Land of Hope and Glory. The biggest surprise came when Santa Claus is coming to town was heard in the middle of a Christmas carol. When asked about it, he said, I didn't think anybody would notice. (laughs) I guess I should add that having moved away, these organists are no longer members of this church. So you don't have to guess. We should also be very thankful that we have had very capable pianists to aid in our worship. There was a Sunday when Bert Scali hit the organ keys and no sound came out. The organ was broken. The pianist, Rosemary Van Dalen, rescued the situation and accompanied the rest of the service on the piano. After no one objected, after that, no one objected when Bert and Rosemary would play piano organ duets. And that is something that we now take for granted, but that was new then. So I think we should be grateful that since the pipe organ that was purchased in 1986 needed to be replaced, we have another beautiful organ played very capably and sensibly by our current worship director, Stephanie Van Royen, accompanied sometimes in melodic duets with our current great pianist, Lisa DeLang, Gloria Kwong, and Sarah Smith. I should mention that beside my own memories, some of this information is found in our church's 50th anniversary book. And a lot of it I learned from Mr. Bert Scali, a charter member of this church and an organist in this congregation for about 50 years. And does he have a fantastic memory for dates and details? And he will now come and play a few hymns for us on our new organ. Thank you very much, Bert.
Thank you, Bert. I'd like to invite Rick Decker to come up. Our new organ has a selection of orchestral sounds, which are very versatile. And so I was chatting with Rick and I'm like, I really want to use the organ with the guitar. And so you'll hear me accompanying Rick with some string sounds, a uh, clarinet and a flute. And I think he's gonna say a little bit about the song. Yeah, we weren't sure what song would we choose, and we chose this song. It's about, um, yeah, there's so many questions that we have in life that we'll probably never get an answer, and there's so many things that would be maybe showing against why would we have this faith in this God. But yet then we have glimpses like this when Bert played the organ and the sound of the the pipes and that they, they stir up in us the hope that we have. We do have a hope in this God who is who's our only answer to our question in life. What's your only question is that I don't belong to myself, but, but to the one who saved me. Just 
questions asked might never be resolved. Even so, whom have I but you? 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 Questions asked might never be resolved, and though my color dawn might turn to shades of gray, and though the mountains fall. They fall into the sea. Let's once again rise in body or spirit and sing together when peace like a river.
So the time has come to welcome and introduce our guest organist, Andre Knevel. Andre was born in Bussum, the Netherlands, and emigrated to Canada in 1975. He completed his organ studies in performance and church music with Dr. John Tuttle, associate professor of the University of Toronto, and presently he gives many recitals throughout Canada, the USA, and Europe, Netherlands, which he's going back to this summer. Concert tours have also taken places uh, around the world in many different locations. And if you'd like to speak with Andre or check out his CDs, they're available in the Fellowship Hall uh, after tonight's performance. I'm very thankful to Andre for coming here tonight and sharing his beautiful music. It's been such a pleasure just hanging out with him this afternoon and uh, listening to what he has planned for us. So without further ado, welcome to Andre. Come on up. Good evening. I'm always a little bit concerned about uh, the height of the bench. Sometimes it's too low because I got uh, like tall. I'm quite tall, so it's too low. You're sitting like on the, I won't mention it. But when you, <laughs> so I got a bunch of hymnals and put them underneath, and it's a lot better now. Now it says um, on the program, improvisation. Do you know what that means? Because I come across people sometimes, they say, what does improvisation mean? Now, improvisation means that you sit down and you just start playing and see what happens. <laughs> now, this particular piece, that's how it started, but it's still in my head, so that's a good thing. I don't have to think anymore. It's all there. So, another thing I'd like to share with you is, maybe you're wondering, but I'm going to take my shoes off. And maybe this sounds funny to you, but there are actually a lot of professional players, I found out, who play without shoes, play under socks. Um, a couple of years ago, I was in Europe again, and I, had, I was practicing in an organ somewhere, and um, the pedal solo uh, just didn't, it didn't go nice, and I had all kinds of mistakes and stuff. But my wife said, you better listen to your wife always, she says, at home you play in your socks. Why don't you play in your socks? So I played them in socks, and they're like, <laughs> so sorry, they cannot, like in Europe, I can hide it because you're way up in these organs, they don't see you, but here they see everything, so I hope I won't have uh, holes in my socks. Uh, okay. How many organists does it take? <laughs> I promised Andre I would turn the, the volume up and I forgot. So now you're going to get the full effect. Enjoy.
not going to be too loud at times, but um, the organ installer, he knows what he's doing and he knows exactly the building. And according to the building, he, he installs everything. It's the same with pipe organs. A pipe organ is voiced to the building, so it can never be too loud, really. And if it is too loud, then don't blame me for it. <laughs> I have to tell you that I played many electronic organs besides pipe organs. And um, I have to say, and I'm really serious about this, this is one of the nicer ones I've ever played. Because I find an organ has to be motivating. You have to be inspired. And if you play this organ, it's quite quite a phenomenal instrument. So it's very uh, joyful to play on this instrument. The next piece will be a Bach prelude, um, choral prelude, Sleepers Wake and Voices Calling. Bach wrote about 212 organ pieces. I won't play them all, I'll just play <laughs> actually three of them. The other one is also an, um, an organ uh, choral prelude. And the third one is um, an orchestral work, actually, but arranged for organ. We are Duncan in God. It is not uh, Duncan. Now, now, thank well, or God. That's not what the song is. But in German, uh, we are Duncan in God. So it had a totally different melody, different tune. So two chorale preludes, Sleepers Wake, a voice is calling, and the other one I don't know out my head now. Sorry, it's on the program.
the next piece, Elgar, that's an English uh, composer. And um, he wrote a couple of military marches. And this is one of them, march number one, I think it says on the program. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, but listening to one of the people doing a speech here, that uh, some organist before um, put a Christmas carol, uh, when playing Christmas carols and put a Santa Claus song in there, and the Land of Hope and Glory song, ooh. Well, this is a march of hand, Land of Hope and Glory, so I hope they won't fire me after this. <laughs> and the other one is Nimrod, it's very soft, Sounds very nice on this organ. So, um, March Military and Nimrod.
next piece is um, from Charles Marie Widor. He was a French um, um, romantic organ composer. He wrote all kinds of stuff. This man was just like yeah, phenomenal. Um, besides organ, he wrote piano and the violin, and I don't, I don't know what they, I don't know all these people found the time to do all this. But anyway, he wrote uh, nine organ symphonies. And each symphony has um, uh, four or five movements. Okay, symphony one, symphony two, symphony three, symphony four, and five is actually the most um, popular one. Now, the final, so the last movement of that symphony is called toccata. Toccata means um, you get a whole bunch of fast notes. So. <laughs> So there's no letting up in this piece because if the if the right hand is done with the fast nose, then the left hand takes over. So um, yeah, like you have to be uh, in good shape to be able to play this. So uh, Toccata by Charles Marie Widor. By the way, it's in the organ world. It's a very popular um, uh, composition.
Now, now you get one of those uh, improvisations again. Um, this is actually a journey. It says how you program journey through God's creation. Um, actually, when I, in one of my travelings, when one time I flew over the Rocky Mountains going out west, and you see all these mountains and the sun was shining on it, and it was just like awesome, you know. I thought, boy, God's creation is just phenomenal. And um, I thought I'm going to write something about this. Now, um, it starts with departure, but we're not going to go in a, tra uh, in a plane, but we're going in a train. So we're going to board a train, so you hear the train, and then the train is traveling to countryside. You hear the birds, all the nice, you know, nature stuff. And then if you listen carefully, if you thought this was a lot of noise, then there's a storm coming. You hear the storm, you hear the wind come, the wind is picking up, and, and, and then a big storm will take care, and well, anyway. So after this storm, there's a little shelter, there's, you know, like a soft uh, selection. And then I find, you know, the proper ending with this, and we sang it already. I hope you don't mind, but I like to play a little bit on how great thou art. You hear also in one of those verses, the birds and the winds and all that stuff. So departure by train, countryside, birds, storm, noise, shelter, quietness, how great thou art.
Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Andre. That was amazing. I have to take the books away. My legs are not as long. <laughs> So next you're going to hear an organ piano duet of the song, The Heavens Are Telling. And this is part of Haydn's oratorio, Creation, which he wrote to tell the biblical story of creation in song. And these words, some of them come from Psalm 19, so I'll read the words for you. The heavens are telling the glory of God, the wonder of his work, displays the firmament. In all the lands resounds the word, never perceived, ever understood, ever, ever understood. The heavens are telling the glory of God, the wonder of his work displays the firmament.
Thank you. Next, I'd like to invite our sanctuary choir to come forward. And we have a wonderful group of singers who um, each season that we have choir, they choose whether or not they're able to commit for that time period. So we do a choir at Christmas, at Easter, and now we have a special choir just for this concert. So there's two pieces we're gonna sing for you. And uh, I'd like to thank all my choir members. I'd like to thank Gloria for accompanying the choir. The first song is Just a Closer Walk with Thee. And thank you to Jack Strickwitta for being our soloist. The second song is a setting of the hymn, I Will Praise Him. And uh, I'm thankful that Pastor Moses is also very musically talented and is willing to play the flute part on the organ using the symphonic sound for that piece. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. 
We have one more opportunity to sing together, praise our God. So we're invited to rise and to sing, let all things now live in. Well, it's been a wonderful evening. I again would like to thank all of our performers. Thank you to our tech team, Janet, Brent, and Matt, for being in the booth. To our worship ministry team for serving refreshments, which you're all invited to. And to our congregation, council, and staff for your ongoing encouragement and support of our music ministry here at First CRC Barry. So I'd like to invite Andre forward for a moment. Please come on up. Because we have a bouquet of flowers coming for you. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all of you for singing so beautifully. It's absolutely lovely. And just a quick reminder that as you leave the sanctuary, you are invited or welcome to give a donation to the music programs at Unity and Timothy. There's a box on the table back there. And please enjoy some refreshments and uh, peruse the CD selection. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna invite the choir to go first. Go to the coffee. <laughs> Thank you, folks. And for those of you who may have not brought your wallet, you can always go to our website and you can pay by PayPal. And please make a note that it is for the music donation and it will go to where it should go. Thank you.